gracias a todos por juntarse con nosotros. Ahora soy Paul Galesen, soy el manejador de comunicaciones de Fondar Sonoma. Vamos a tener esta actualización de COVID. Ahora para diciembre 2, diciembre, el 1 de diciembre de 2021. Aquí está el equipo. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la sesión informativa. Esta sesión informativa se está transmitiendo en vivo por nuestro canal de YouTube con interpretación al español. Para escuchar la versión en español, puedo usar el link de YouTube que se encuentra en la página de Facebook del Condado de Sonoma. Gracias. Y ahora regresamos para atrás con Paul Gullickson. Thank you, Gilbert. Vamos a empezar con las buenas noticias del condado. Nuestra campaña de vacunas sigue. Uh, especialmente en el área de las vacunas de los niños. Hasta ahorita nuestra población elegible de cinco y más este, están 74% casi completamente vacunados y un 8% parcialmente vacunados. Y eso es uh, de 5 a 11. Están 20, cerca de 25% va parcialmente vacunados y el segundo, la segunda vacuna de pediatras va a empezar esta semana. So, eso debería subir bastante y también estamos reconocimiento que estamos ahorita está la gente la preocupación acerca del variante nuevo que se ha descubierto, que es el Omicron. Este, y ahora empezamos de que el primer caso confirmado aquí en Estados Unidos, aquí se encontró aquí en California. Este, y sabemos que la gente está preocupada de esto. Vamos a hablar ahora acerca de eso, de que lo que está pasando con esa, que ese variante, que es un variante de preocupación por la Organización Mundial de Salud, porque se está repartiendo. Y vimos a qué es significante, porque la última variante que tuvimos con Delta fue el, el broto que salió en el, en el verano y está alrededor de todo el mundo. So, queremos asegurar de que no ha habido... Hasta ahorita en el condado Sonoma no hay, está verificado que hay alguna persona con esta variante. Entonces, no quiere decir que no puede pasar, ¿verdad? pero sí, pero vamos a hablar acerca de eso también más. Hay más de lo que no sabemos acerca de este Omicron variante. Nuestros oficiales de salud están cuidando la situación cercamente y sabemos de que las personas que no están vacunados pueden... Uh, tienen más potencial de que salgan con la virus que los que ya están vacunados. Quiere decir que la cosa más segura que ustedes pueden hacer para protegerse usted y su familia es de vacunarse, tomar ese paso en anticipación de que un nuevo variante que está circulando en nuestra área. Sabemos que muchas preguntas tienen acerca de las vacunas de los pediatras y otros temas y la nueva variante que vamos a contestar lo más que podamos ahora. Aquí tenemos a la doctora Shandy, la Doctor, también a, a la jefa de salud y también a Casey de Ángelo, que es el, el, el entre medio de, también de vacunas y la señora Raquel Ruiz, que también es una persona del Departamento de Salud también. Si tienen preguntas para nuestros panelistas, por favor, pónganlos en la parte de en YouTube donde están mirando y, o aquí en, el, en la charla, en el cuarto de charla. O pueden mandarlos por correo al, al condado de Sonoma. Y muchos ya saben cuáles son los correos uh, electrónicos de Sonoma del condado de Sonoma. Y vamos a tratar de contestar las preguntas lo más pronto posible. Ahora vamos a hablar acerca de la, de la doctora Mays. Gracias, Pepo. Todo el, uh, lo que el variante Omicron es la que habría hasta ahorita. Sabemos muy poquito acerca de la transmisión qué tan fácil se puede tramitar, qué tan severo se puede poner, qué, qué tipo de infección y el impacto que puede hacer todavía. Y como dijo Paula hasta ahorita, no sabemos qué tan efectos son las vacunas contra eso. Los estudios ahorita se están haciendo en el, todo el mundo. Y para darles un poquito de la historia de fondo, en noviembre 9, la primera primer caso uh, que se conoció, que ahora le decimos Omicron, B11 que viene siendo la infección, salió en, en Sudáfrica en un espécimen. <coughs> este fue el, el, el Omicron, la variante Omicron, que en noviembre 24 se le nombró. En noviembre 24, la Organización del Mundo lo designó este, este tipo de, de virus como Omicron. El gobierno también puso una 
capa en todos los viajes de países que están en el sur de África. Entonces, uh, como dijo el tapón, sí sabemos que solamente hemos tenido un caso aquí en Estados Unidos, aquí en California. Entonces, la, lo, la verdad es que estamos esperando más información, no estamos seguros qué impacto va a ser y les vamos a dejar saber en lo que recibamos más información hasta que sepamos más. Lo mejor que ustedes pueden hacer mientras es agarrar sus vacunas, si no lo han agarrado todavía. Si están en medio de su serie de vacunas, por favor, acabe su segunda vacuna. Si está vacunado con dos dosis, entonces, uh, con cualquier vacuna, este, reciba su tercera vacuna del booster. O si tomó la de Johnson Johnson, entonces reciba su segunda vacuna como booster. La preocupación aquí es de que esta variante va a querer empezar ahora, apenas que estamos entrando a la temporada de festividades de Navidad a donde vamos a ver junto con más familia adentro de las casas porque está haciendo frío afuera. Es fácil mantener las medidas de mitigación, de, de seguir usando cubrebocas, de seguir marchando su distancia, de practicar y que más que todo que se vacune. Si está vacunado, si se quiere tomar pruebas seguro también. Es muy, muy temprano ahorita para mirar si esto va a traer un brote nuevo de de casos. Entonces, uh, hemos tenido todo el tiempo una, un brote después de los días festivos. Uh, so, quiere decir que la gente se está juntando y están saliendo infectados. So, lo más importante es de que por cada mil residentes de que se estén vacunando y que se estén cuidando. <coughs> Para todos los que no están vacunados, este, están, tienen tres veces más oportunidad o chance de que salgan positivos. Entonces, hay un, están a más riesgo para la infección. Entonces, uh, finalmente sigan probando, haciendo sus pruebas. Tomen sus pruebas si se sienten, si tienen síntomas, vaya a la prueba. Puede irse a hacer una cita. O puede ir a una clínica donde puede entrar caminando y hacerse su vacuna. O puede hacer su vacuna, en el, su uh, prueba en emergencia también. Ahora va a hablar la doctora Shindy uh, más acerca de la campaña de las vacunas. Y no se olviden de que deberían de estar recibiendo su vacuna de gripa también o del flu. Como estaba mencionado anteriormente, las clínicas ahorita están con un empiezo rápido. Estamos esperando... Vamos a, llevamos mucho más gente de lo que esperábamos. Tenemos como 23% de los niños de 5 a 11 años que han recibido su primera dosis. Hemos estado, estado trabajando con el, con el Condado Sonoma de Comunicaciones para servir en las escuelas y servir a la gente que no tiene acceso fácil para recibir la vacuna o para me, ayuda médica. Entonces, estamos a, atendiendo en escuelas donde hay varias cantidad de vacunados, entonces estamos ayudando ahí. Si no hay una clínica en su escuela, pueden tomar su vacuna de su doctor o en una farmacia local. Algunas de las clínicas que van a ver en el Departamento de Educación va a ser el viernes en Goldsburg, la primaria, Roseland, en la primaria de Roseland y en Glen Ellen. Estas clínicas son para estudiantes y sus familias y para el personal de ese campus. Los sábados en Cali Camerfag y la lenguaje de Academia de Windsor este, en Santa Rosa. El lunes va a ser en Sassarini, en la escuela en Sonoma. Donde quiera que vayan, las vacunas van a estar sin costo a nadie. Uh, las dosis para los adultos, para los uh, adolescentes y ahí van a estar disponibles y las más grandes también. So, todos de cinco años para arriba pueden tomarse la vacuna al mismo tiempo. También la vacuna de la gripe va a estar dispuesta en estas clínicas. 70% de, las vacunas, de, los, de los vacunados de, de 12 arriba están vacunados ahorita. Casos de, por cada 100.000 de población ya bajaron a 5.6 en la semana antes del Día de Gracias. De, un alto de 166 y eso es una, un bajón bastante grande. Uh, 70% de la personal ya están vacunados en todos. Entonces hemos hecho gran progreso 
pero todavía nos falta hacer mucho trabajo para cumplir con todos. Esto es algo urgente. Con la circulación, especialmente con este nuevo variante, es un buen recordatorio de recordarle a todos que tienen que vacunarse. Si ya se vacunaron con sus vacunas, agarran su tercera vacuna a los dos meses y ya agarraron su, se agarraron su vacuna de Johnson Johnson también. Ah, ya están dispuestos para todos los que están arriba de 18 años um, y estos boosters ya están, son críticos para los que están para la edad arriba de 65 años o con condiciones crónicas. La mayoría de, uh, y casi 36 uh, uh, adultos uh, de, o ancianos han recibido su vacuna también. Pueden encontrar toda la información acerca de las clínicas y cómo hacer una cita en socoemergencia.org. Uh, estoy uh, dispuesta para contestar sus uh, preguntas, pero vamos a dejarle al Dr. Mes que va a contestar preguntas acerca de nuestras de nuestro cuidado para la, la, el variante nuevo de la Delta y de la nueva variante de Omicron. Gracias, Dr. Shinde. Um, el condado de Sonoma, que es el laboratorio, ya sacó la habilidad de la virus que causa la COVID el, el julio del año, hasta el, el último julio. Hemos sacado especímenes en el, en el laboratorio de aquí, cerca de aquí. Y desde que se encontró el variante de Sudáfrica de Omicron, hemos hecho análisis y hemos, hemos buscado en todas las pruebas que se han Uh, las, las pruebas que hemos hecho, a ver si en caso de que se nos pasó algún variante de Omicron aquí localmente y con mucho gusto, hasta ahorita no se nos ha pasado nadie en el, aquí en localmente y adicionalmente hay personas que no están uh, probadas en otras partes del estado, pero los estados de laboratorio hicieron lo mismo, se hicieron un análisis de todas las pruebas pasadas y hasta ahorita no, uh, no, más, no se encontraron uh, Omicron, variantes de Omicron. Seguimos a la... Estamos haciendo ahorita cuidados para los variantes o cualquier otro variante que puede salir, que pueden salir. Este, trabajamos cercamente con nuestros epidemiólogos para, y el equipo para ellos pueden... Eh, pueden hacer cualquier chequeo de cualquier espécimen que se requiera. Gracias por la oportunidad de traerles esta actualización y estar dispuesta a contestar cualquier pregunta. Ok, sorry, my microphone was off. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Rachel, just, um, would you just clarify uh, one, one point? Si pueden clarificar un punto nada más. Entonces, ustedes han regresado y han chequeado mil de diferentes uh, casos, ¿verdad? Para ver si a alguien se nos pasó que tuviera la, de que tuvieron el nuevo variante de Omicron y hasta ahorita no han encontrado nada. ¿Es correcto? Sí, eso es correcto. Uh, de cada mil espécimes que se chequearon, que se aprobaron aquí en el condado de Sonoma, aquí ya está en el... el en el laboratorio público o en alguno de los hospitales locales o en algún otro laboratorio. Y uh, es más bien, viene siendo como un tercio de los, uh, de los espécimes de aquí del condado de Sonoma. Uh, este viene siendo como un tercio. Y los demás se hicieron en el laboratorio del estado. Esos son los recientes, más recientes, ¿verdad? Eso es una sumación bien. Sí, los uh, mil casos son de julio 2021 fue cuando empezamos a hacer nuestras secuencias aquí. So, todo lo que hemos estado haciendo en secuencias aquí es lo que estamos, lo que chequearon. Sí. Sí, había durante cuando hubo el brote de este que sí, sí, se anunció. Gracias por clarificar eso. Quiero ahora irme, si puedo, a ver si puedo. vamos a tomar preguntas del público y también de nuestros compañeros de la, de la prensa. Quiero ahorita antes hablar con Casey D'Angelo, que es el, el enlace, el enlazador o el, el entremedio de los, de los virus aquí en Sonoma, el condado de Sonoma. 
¿Estás tú contento con lo que el Shendek, la actualización que dio la doctora Shendek en lo que estamos haciendo con las vacunas de los niños? Y a, estamos casi al 25%, que la meta era de que tuviéramos al 25% para el primero de diciembre, que es ahora. ¿Estás contento de cómo van todas las cosas hasta ahorita? Sí, estamos muy contentos porque no empezamos la vacuna hasta noviembre 9 y empezamos en las escuelas a noviembre con una semana, en dos semanas y media antes de el día de gracias. Estoy very hopeful that this will just keep growing. And, uh, and as Dr. Shindy said, this week we're starting the second doses for the, the, the pediatric vaccine. And I think that will really make a difference as well. Uh, so our goal for the next part is to have 50% by the end of January. And I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to get there. Um, yeah, that may be a little challenging given that uh, we're not going to have any school the last two weeks of the, the month, but are, you st are we still planning to have the uh, clinics activated at that time? No, no, but but it's, I said the end, end of January, not the end of December. Right. So we yeah. have the month of January to, to work on that. Okay. But uh, there may be one or two clinics in December, but over the break, but mostly not. Yeah. And we want to let the public know that there are other opportunities for pediatric vaccinations throughout the month uh, through pharmacies, through healthcare providers, and through some of our other clinics. So we'll, we'll, there's more information about that on socoemergency.org uh, for those who would like it. But um, thank you for being here. Um, yeah. Dr. Mace, can we go to you next? Um, what, uh, what are you hearing from our hospitals about uh, their current capacity? And are, are there concerns out there about a possible surge of COVID cases this, uh, this winter? We are not, thanks Paul, we're not seeing that yet at this time. In fact, we uh, talk to our hospital partners on a regular basis and there hasn't been an increase in hospitalizations uh, here over the past few weeks. We are monitoring the situation closely, however, as we've spoken out about before, deferred care, meaning people who didn't seek care last year due to COVID and now are coming to attention are taking up um, an, an increased number of hospital beds. But as far as the COVID situation, I think we're stable at this time. And I believe, uh, Kate, you can probably uh, weigh in on that as well in terms of the numbers. Um, yes. As of data reported yesterday, there were 22 individuals hospitalized with COVID-19 hospitalizations, with six of those um, people being in the ICU. And that's consistent with what we've seen over the last few weeks with an average about 20 hospitalized per day and about five people in the ICU. Um, and so far, we aren't seeing influenza cases hospitalized, which is promising. Um, and as Dr. Bayes um, mentioned, the main concern is just really that we are seeing a higher hospital census overall with COVID and non-COVID patients in the hospital. So the hospitals are a little bit more vulnerable to being overwhelmed if a surge were to occur. Um, and then we're seeing some intermittent, intermittent staffing challenges um, just due to that high census. But COVID-19 cases um, seem to be stable at this time. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you both. Um, Dr. Shendi, let me let me go to you next. Uh, we understand there there has been a bit of a rush for boosters, um, obviously, since there has now been uh, everybody over 18 and six months since their second shot are now eligible. And I and my understanding is there may be a bit more of a, uh, a demand uh, now that there's news about this Omicron variant. What, what are you hearing and are we able to meet the demand? Yeah, thanks for asking, Paul. We certainly have seen increased demand for boosters, which is great because we do want to uh, ensure that people do get their boosters. Um, data does seem to show that the boosters not only increase and ensure that that antibody level is consistent, but a booster seems to also activate different arms of the immune system, which is helpful in counteracting any variant. We've seen that with Delta, and presumably that would be the case with Omicron. We will, of course, need to see what the information shows from the studies. However, it's a great idea to go and get a booster. Um, there is a lot of demand at the clinics. At this point, our supply is good, but it is uh, to be expected that with increased demand, please be patient. Um, please be patient. Expect that there are going to be longer wait times. There are going to be longer lines. 
Um, all of this came about in the last 24 to 48 hours. So it's very hard for all medical facilities and providers to suddenly scale up within a very short period of time. We are looking into that. We are trying to increase our capacity, um, but please uh, keep in mind that uh, we all are in this together. We all are wanting to get boosters, um, but expect that it may take a while. And it's it's fine if an appointment is made for next week or the week after, that's okay. Um, getting that booster in before the holidays is quite important, but um, but please do be patient. We have seen a lot of, uh, of increased uh, demand at our clinics. Okay, great. Well, thank you, and thank you all. I think we're going to go to some questions um, from our viewers and our media partners. Uh, first, let me start. Uh, this is a question that I'm going to direct to uh, Dr. Mace or Rachel, perhaps. Um, uh, the question is from Jim. Uh, do all samples uh, of COVID cases, I'm presuming, um, go to extreme study to determine the variant? I guess they're asking whether there are there's sequencing done on all COVID samples. What what do we think? Yeah, thanks for that question. I am going to turn this over to Dr. Reese to answer that question. Sure. It depends on the number, overall number of positive specimens that we are getting. The goal is to do universal sequencing, but for example, during the height of the Delta surge, there was insufficient capacity to sequence all of the specimens. And so our contact tracing team would prioritize the specimens for the lab to sequence. Now, right now, um, we have enough capacity to sequence all of the new positive COVID specimens that are coming in. And we are going back into our archive to sequence some that um, may not have been sequenced earlier. Okay, on that same, thank you. And on that same note, um, Mike, one of our viewers asked, how do we know a booster is effective against this new variant? I think that's a great question. I think uh, we're still trying to get the data because it's such a new uh, situation, new variant, as to whether boosters and just generally vaccination is effective towards this new variant. So far, I have certainly read a few things suggesting that vaccination is effective, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Shende to respond as well. So I think we're in a watch and wait mode right now. Dr. Shende? Yeah, it's true. We don't have the specific data, and uh, the studies are underway. Scientists are looking at the specifics of uh, antibody production against this variant strain. And um, what we've heard is over the next two to three weeks, we'll have more specific data on that. However, what we do know is that in the past, as in with the Delta variant, um, a booster seemed to bolster different parts of the immune system, as I mentioned before. And even though there were some mutations specifically in the um, binding receptor for the spike, spike protein, the increased effect of the immune system was able to, able to overcome those mutations and the vaccine was effective. Hopefully that will be the case with Omicron, but we will have more data over the next two to three weeks. Okay, um, and another of our viewers asked a question that's on the minds of many that we've been receiving this week is it's, uh, when do we plan on dropping the mask mandate? And is it possible that the, this variant is going to delay uh, that, that decision? Dr. Mace, what do you think? Yeah, thanks. Again, a great question. Um, as you know, we have three criteria that need to be met in order for us to drop the mask mandate. One is about case rate. Simply uh, by the CDC criteria, being under 50 cases um, uh, per, per week per 100,000. And that kind of translates into seven under seven cases per day per 100,000 population here in Sonoma County. And we're, as you noted today, we're above that right now. The second criterion is a low and hospital, uh, low and stable hospitalization rate. And again, we haven't seen a big increase in hospitalizations, but that's something that we're monitoring. Now, thirdly, um, we either need to get 80% of our total population vaccinated or be eight weeks after the, the uh, um, emergency use authorization for the vaccine for the five to 11 year old age group. Now we'll hit that eight weeks after 
somewhere in the end of December, I believe it's December 24th. And we are at, uh, Dr. Trendy, correct me if I'm wrong, 75% of the total population vaccinated at this time. Is that correct? 74% uh, of the over five. I believe 70% yeah, of the- um, Okay, 70% of the total population, 74%, five to 11. So we still have a ways to go there. So we're waiting to meet these metrics before we would drop or repeal the indoor mask mandate. And as soon as that could occur, is the end of the year, early January, we're following all these metrics. And as far as how this variant could affect that, we're not sure. We haven't seen a single case here yet in Sonoma County. There's been one case in the United States so far. So I think it's gonna take a little more time for us to understand where we're going with our numbers to, to understand how this variant might affect that. Okay, great. Let's go to our uh, media partners now. We will start with, uh, uh, we invite anybody from our media want to uh, ask a question to go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call on you. Let's go to Martin Espinoza. Uh, Martin. Hi there. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mace, what are you hearing from your counterparts in the Bay Area, other health officers in terms of the possibility of isolating or just keeping Omicron from from spreading the way Delta did is is that is it just not possible or or is there any chance? Well, I don't think we know what the extent of the issue is at this point. I mean, we don't. We only have the first case in the United States that's been reported to us. So um, it has been a topic of discussion in terms of what to do if this, if this variant were to come, but there's so little, Martin, that we know about the variant. We don't know how virulent it is. We don't know what popula populations it might affect uh, selectively. We don't know how the boosters and the vaccination generally are gonna be helpful. So I think it's a little premature for us to be able to consider um, the question that you're asking. Um, by the time we get the answers, though, <laughs> it'll be all, even if it is mild, I, I would imagine it would, it would just be widespread. Well, let um, me repeat that the things that we know are effective are getting vaccinated because we still think that if you were to get COVID and you're vaccinated, you're going to be impacted significantly less in terms of your symptoms and your outcome. Second thing is wearing a mask especially in indoor settings. And if unvaccinated, definitely wearing a mask at all times. And then just taking care to make sure that we're following all the non-pharmaceutical interventions that we've been talking about for the past year and a half. I think those are the ways we can help. I have a follow-up. Um, with regard to uh, uh, the question of universal uh, uh, sequencing or genotyping, um, I, uh, Rachel had uh, expressed that the goal, right? The goal would be is universal sequencing, uh, and that right now we're able to, we have enough capacity to sequence because our the num our case numbers are not as high as they were during previous surges. What can you give us, Rachel, some specifics on what that capacity is? How many tests a day or a week, uh, genotyping tests? Um, right now, um, you know, we're using the Clear Labs analyzer and we run 32 specimens per run. Right now, we're running two runs per week. So we can increase the number of runs per week if needed to increase our sequencing capacity. And there might be, if there are very high volumes of positive specimens, we may implement another PCR test that would screen the positive specimen to give some indication of which ones might be an Omicron variant. And then we would run those first on the sequencer. So to get those numbers correct, we, we, we are doing about 64 a week right now. Is that right? That is correct. And, uh, but we have a capacity to do more runs? Yes, if needed, we can increase the number of runs. By how much? 
I think that would depend on lab staffing, but definitely we can do at least three runs per week. And right. yeah. Okay. And of course, if there's an urgent need, we are here on the weekend or to do something on an expedited basis. Great, great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, I want to turn to another, uh, unless there's more questions from our media partners, uh, I'm going to uh, turn to another question that's come in. It's from one of our uh, one of our viewers who is not what I would say is a fan of our vaccines by virtue of their question, but um, I think they raise a good point that perhaps is something we should address here. Um, she asks, will you explain to people that having a vaccine a vaccine uh, that that getting sick and transmitting it makes it resistant to the current jab. Will you explain to people that having a vaccine, getting sick and transmitting it makes? I think she's saying that if you just if you just if you get sick, that you're resistant uh, to the vaccine. Is that true? No, uh, I mean, we know that even if vaccinated, you can get COVID. That was shown in the clinical trials. And we've seen many cases here, even in Sonoma County, of people who get COVID, even if fully vaccinated. The key is that those people who are vaccinated have mild symptoms, a mild presentation, or maybe they're asymptomatic completely and we don't even pick them up but they're not having the very negative outcomes that we want to avoid, hospitalization and death. So getting the vaccine is definitely going to help you in protecting yourself, your family, and your community from bad outcomes from COVID-19. There is no evidence to suggest uh, anything about I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean by resistance or resistance, but there's no uh, evidence that suggests that there's anything negative at this point in terms of uh, getting a resistant form of COVID or something like that uh, from vaccination. That has not been shown at all. Well, I think uh, the other, the second part of the question, I, I think uh, helps explain where this person is coming from. She says, um, you explain to people that there are many different coronaviruses that have been around in our lifetime, so that this is just another one that's part of life. I think she's sort of uh, minimizing the seriousness of this form of coronavirus. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, thanks for that. In fact, uh, you know, the coronaviruses are uh, often the cause of even a common cold. But, but uh, this particular coronavirus has shown us that it kills people. We've had many, many, many deaths, especially in vulnerable people, older, older folks over, than, over 65, those with underlying conditions, and more recently, even healthy people who are vac unvaccinated. So we know that this coronavirus is different than the coronaviruses that have been present in the human population or in history for many, many, many uh, years, probably hundreds of years. So we're dealing with something, even though it is a coronavirus, something that's different, new, and something that we need to uh, be very uh, careful about. And that's why we're um, highly recommending vaccination for anybody who hasn't been vaccinated. I don't know, Dr. Shande, do you wanna weigh in on that? Yeah, along those same lines. Yes, it's true that the coronaviruses are the cause of the common cold. As Dr. May said, this is very different. And one thing I hear often is, oh, it's just like the flu. So I think it's important to look over those numbers. So in, even in a, a very bad flu season, at most we see 60,000 people die in the United States, which is, again, too many. But 60,000, and even if you compare that over two years, which is what we're moving on uh, with COVID, almost two years worth of data, we're now at 770,000. So the, the two, the, there's a huge difference between what COVID can do in terms of mortality 
And that's nothing to say of the morbidity in terms of those people who've been hospitalized, who have been uh, severely affected and have long-term complications of it. It's, it's much, much worse compared to the flu that at most might cause, at absolute most, 60,000 a year or 120,000 a year compared to where we are now, which is 770,000. And I think it's a very good time for us to make the point that uh, we are in the midst of the influenza season now. And if you haven't gotten your flu shot, that's another really important preventative measure that will be helpful. So go get your flu shot as well. Yeah, and I would I would note that the global number of deaths is now in excess of 5.2 million uh, people around the world that have died from COVID. And uh, in many parts of the world, the vaccination numbers are still incredibly low. Um, so yes, if the takeaway, if there's one thing from this, the takeaway is we don't know a lot about the Omicron, but the best thing we can do, we do know are the, are the tools that we have been using all along, which is uh, get vaccinated, wear your masks and um, practice uh, social distancing and uh, avoid large crowds. So and Paul, if I can just add one more really important factor. Please. Unvaccinated people are 27.8 times more likely to be hospitalized here and 13.5 times more likely to die. So again, we're not dealing with the common cold. We're dealing with a new virus, something we haven't seen before. That's why it's a pandemic and it's an emergency. And that's why we really need people to get vaccinated, given these numbers. And, and most of those numbers, are the, all of those numbers are related to Delta, not Omicron. And um, oh, as much absolutely. as we talk about Omicron, we are not done with Delta, right? Okay, well, I think we're going to um, end it there. And uh, we thank everybody for uh, joining us today. Um, uh, I, I'd like to thank all of our panelists. I'd also like to thank our crew uh, who helped put this together to get today, including Juan, our Spanish interpreter, and Odie, our ASL interpreter. Uh, just to remind everybody, we will be repeating this briefing in Spanish tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, Sylvia Lemos from our communications team, along with Marcos Mejia, will be hosting that event. So please help pass the word. I also ask you to tune in to the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday, December 7th, when our health team will be providing a more detailed look into our county efforts to combat COVID. Until then, we hope you all will, we hope you all will join us for that. Until then, uh, stay safe and everybody and have a good week.